ladies and germs thanks for joining me once again video number 11 I have twice fucked up the number on my videos so far either I'm just gonna stop doing it or start being correct uh, thanks for joining me today <clears throat> gonna do something a little different uh, I'm gonna do my top albums of 2015 I've seen a lot of mid-year lists for 2016 <laughs> And I thought, eh, why don't I just go through last year's stuff? Um, I did a top 20 list for No Clean Singing at the end of the year, and I don't have every single one of those releases on uh, physical format yet. So I've just pulled out all the ones that I do have, and I thought I'd go through that. Um, it's pretty much the same as the list. There's only a couple of things missing. And honestly, the reason that I didn't get the things, the physical copies yet, is because maybe I've kind of changed my mind or that I've gotten sick of whatever I uh, didn't wind up picking up. But anyway, today uh, we're gonna be listening to Earth and Pillars. Um, this is Earth One, is uh, their debut release, I think. This is an Italian band, kind of reminds me of like Paysage de Ver, uh, the Swiss black metal band. And this is the Avant Garde uh, A5 Digibook version of it. It's a really cool atmospheric black metal band. Actually, no, I think they're from Canada. Anyway, um, I'm just getting into this. I've only listened to it maybe once or twice. So far, it's really, really good. Uh, it's kind of ambient. It's not really harsh or it's kind of monotonous and kind of heady, if you will. So I thought that would not really interrupt this uh, video. So let's get started here. Um, I'm not really gonna say the numbers of what these are just because they don't really correlate to what my actual list was um, and I don't wanna get confused. So I'm just gonna be working from the bottom up to number one so you can figure it out yourself. Um, so at the bottom, I've got Infura Bruo's In Conjuration. This is a great uh, new East Coast United States black metal band. Uh, kind of throwing some interesting new ideas in um, But they're also kind of like just meat and potatoes kind of stuff like uh, you would expect from one of those upper East Coast bands um, I don't can't really think of anything that I would compare this album in particular to but the reason I got to be such a fan of them was with their last record which reminded me quite strongly of uh, Emperor and especially like their anthems era stuff um, it's not quite as uh, theatrical or orchestral, but just like really strong songwriting, um, amazing mus musicianship. So this is a good record to check out on Bind Rune Productions, came out last year. Uh, so Infura Bruo. Uh, next up, I've got, uh, I just got this in the mail not too long ago. This is Ethereal Shroud, They Became the Falling Ash. And this is, I don't really know much about this band, but I believe they're from England and... It's kind of like if you took a really atmospheric black metal band and slowed it way, way down to like a, a doom type of speed, but still somehow it maintains that atmosphere of being really uh, droney and uh, and and cat and rapturing. I guess it's kind of hard to come up with my my words on the fly. I'm used to writing reviews down and spending. A couple of like a week or two on just like formulating my reviews so this is kind of a new foray to me um so this is yeah they became the falling ash this is on northern silence northern silence has been killing it lately with tons of good stuff uh this cd is limited to 500 copies so you might have missed out already this is a oh man this band surprised me a lot um this is merg varg and bjorn this is a swedish band this came out on Nordvis last year. This is a Swedish band that uh, just has fucking amazing riffs. It's just like straightforward black metal. Um, it actually kind of reminds me maybe of like later era Dark Throne, uh, in that it's kind of it kind of it's kind of Norwegian, whereas usually a Swedish band, you know, you sort of <clears throat> come to expect there to be some inherent melody. That they or like an unavoidable melody it seems like with the Swedes, but uh, this is just fucking nasty and raw. The riffs are brilliant. It's just f chock full of incredible snarly riffs. Production is just mean. It's just a nasty fucking album, and I'm surprised that this wasn't more talked about last year. 
Uh, yeah, so this is on Nordvis Productions. Comes in a sleek little digipack. Really cool album. If you're looking for something fucking mean. Uh, next, turn that down a little bit. I just got this not too long ago. This is Zigard. This is a Ukrainian black metal band. Their album is called Totem. Uh, this is a digipack version. I don't like this digipack because it doesn't have the album cover on it. This is actually the album cover, and this painting is incredible. All the artwork in this thing is great, except I'm just not a big fan of this cover on the digipack, but I just had to get it. The record is phenomenal, and this is limited to 100 copies. I've got 33 of 100, uh, and it's not a CDR or anything like you'd expect something that's limited to 100 copies to be, um, but it's just Ukrainian folk, pagan black metal, not sketchy as far as I know, um, but it's a solo project. This guy just can do every instrument so well and flawlessly. Uh, super catchy song, super interesting storytelling, um, a lot of like l myth and legend and folklore from uh, this area of the Carpathians. Yeah, check this album out. This band, as far as I've heard, uh, can do no wrong, and this record came out last year so fucking good. All right, next I've got, I think, yeah, another Nordvis band. This, Grift, um, they did a split with Saiva, and uh, I want to say Nordvis and Bindrun put that out. That was a killer split, and I was just so stoked to hear full lengths from both bands. Um, this is just great. It can totally fits the bill of post-black metal, uh, but there's tons of interesting instrumentation, a lot of experimentation playing with... Uh, playing around with those instruments. You can see there's like a harpsichord, I guess, or, I don't know, a Hammond organ. Um, but tons of interesting stuff going on here. Um, it seems really passionate. Uh, I haven't really listened to it a whole lot and, and like read along or learned about what this is about, but it just seems real genuine and real interesting. Um, the booklet's full of amazing photos. Uh, it's really interestingly melodic has its own personality to it um yeah i've never heard anything like this can't wait to hear more from them um i think they're playing live soon with uh, panopticon this summer in sweden i think that'd be an interesting show next i just got this yesterday and this is kind of the reason i'm choosing to do this video um this is nettle carrier black coffin rights um kind of i'm gonna say the same things about this that i did about merg just fucking mean, mean, nasty ass riffs. Um, this really reminded me, now this is a Norwegian band um, that I don't think I've even listened to before this album, and I probably should now that I've heard this. Um, a Norwegian band that's just got mean, snarly ass riffs. Reminds me of uh, Dothem's Guard. And what was the other one? There was some, some band just popped in my head yesterday when I was listening to this. I listened to this four times in a row yesterday. It just couldn't fucking get enough of it. Uh, just crazy vocals. Check this out. The riffs are just mind-blowingly insane. Um, it's not melodic at all. It's just atonal, mean as shit. Nasty riffing. God, I wish I could remember what that other band it reminded me of. But yeah, it's kind of like mid-era uh, Dotheim's Guard, if they maybe hadn't taken the, like, cyber or industrial experimental turn that they did. I'm glad they did, but, um, this is kind of like a takeoff of the Monumental Possession album, or maybe even, like, Chronicle of Conga. Um, the, yeah, basically those two albums, like, modern and, like, even more, uh, developed in the style. Incredible record. This is a band I've fallen more and more in love with every release that comes out. This is Horn. Uh, the album is called Feldpost. And uh, this is a German black metal band that's been around for about 12 years or so. Um, we had the chance to, to re-release one of his uh, best records, Naturecraft, on our label on vinyl. That album is just phenomenal. And he's really changed up his style since then. Uh, Excuse me, I got the, I got the merch today. Um, Naturecraft came out in like 2003, I want to say. But anyways, the last few albums, um, 
he's been developing his style a lot more and, and going into a studio and recording instead of self-recording and just kind of trying to sound more like a real full band and uh, that worked pretty well with for him on the last record but this one is where it really starts to come to fruition and uh, this is each song on this is based on a postcard that was sent home from someone who was at war uh, if that sounds any interesting interesting to you look more into it it's all in German so I'd have to do a lot more looking into it to learn more about it but uh, lot, tons of variety in songwriting great 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 songwriting style and maturity to it uh, all of this band stuff is super great and I'm so happy to hear it progressing into a more mature style and looking forward to see what uh, he can do with Horn going forward and also I've been pretty excited because the guy from Horn which is a solo project has been collaborating with a band uh, what are they called they were on my list last year why why can't I think of it gotta have stuff more ready I'll, I'll get back to you on that here in a minute um, another one is on Bind Rune Productions. Bind Rune, a good friend of mine, but amazing label, putting out tons and tons of stuff. This band is called Alda. This is Passage. I talked about this in a minute um, in my last video. Uh, but this is, yeah, Passage, great, emotive, black metal, highly melodic and atmospheric. Uh, check that out on Bind Rune. Sorry, I'm on Metal Archives here looking this up because it's driving me nuts. Um, Cross Vault. Cross Vault is the other Doom band that the guy from Horn has been doing, and Cross Vault has put out two full lengths that are just awesome. Super memorable Doom. Check that out. Uh, and then another record that I did in my last video. Uh, this is Yuvia's Eternidad Solemna. Super hypnotic, intense, intense black metal. Um, it's highly atmospheric solo project from Mexico. Can't recommend it enough. God, that band is so good. Next, so next I've got Panopticon, Autumn Eternal, on CD and LP. Again, on Bind Rune, Nordvis. Um, amazing album, as you would expect. Um, you know, I would have probably put this higher up on my list, but I'm just getting tired of putting Panopticon on the top of my list. It's time to make some room for some other people. And I think Austin would feel the same way if he knew what I was, the decision that I was making in this. But this record is phenomenal, super memorable, melodic as hell. Uh, I'll pull out one of the vinyls. Super beautiful autumn colored vinyl. Making me miss autumn right now. It's hot as fuck outside. Burning me alive. I can't wait till the leaves start changing colors and falling on the ground and my sinuses open up and help me breathe the oxygen that I so need to do nothing on my ass. Next I've got Old Graves. Uh, this Ruin Beneath Snowfile. Now this is just an EP but man I can't wait for the full length. This guy's really impressed me. Uh, they did a split with Paths a year or two ago. And I want to say that I heard that he was going to be doing a full length, um, but then this came out. So I'm still waiting for that full length. It's probably going to be amazing. Um, but I, seriously, this is taking the post-black metal to a new level. Just It's just so much better. It's not all that innovative, but just the songwriting is just cinched up even better, making the expectations from that genre just all that much more memorable and classy I guess if you would um, check out Old Graves if they do if they do a full length it's gonna be amazing I promise you that uh, you're gonna get sick of me on this bind rune recordings killing it again in the Shochwin. this is uh, the heart of Akamon uh, amazing album telling the story about the war Ugh, I keep dropping CDs uh, about a war between Native Americans in Akamon uh, this is a super melodic band. You know, I wasn't a big fan of them before this record, honestly. Um, I dig the acoustic stuff, but I, but uh, I just had a hard time like keeping my keeping my attention peeled to it. 
Um, but I've gone back since I've gotten into this album and I've kind of come to like the older stuff. Uh, but this album is just a super big highlight in their discography and overall in the year's releases. Um, great fucking album. You shouldn't miss this. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about other Bind Rune releases, but this one, fucking phenomenal record. Amazing guitar work. It's got the drummer from Obsequii in it. Um, yeah, it's really highly intelligent stuff. Can't get enough of that band. Or this album, anyways. Really looking forward to what they do next. Uh, next, I've got Amestagons there. Now, I also, I also already talked about this in one of my videos. I feel like I'm kind of stepping over my toes a little bit. Super amazing Doom band. <clears throat> they kind of like, kind of like the that other record I was saying. It's kind of like a black metal band, but slowed down a lot. Uh, it's super heavy and monotonous and repetitive, just pummeling and scary tones into your face um yeah that album just fucking kills uh, it reminds me kind of like I said of Seder and Falls of Raras if that sounds interesting you, to you I swear to god this Amestigon record rules check it out oh how much do I love this band even more than this this is Obsequii Zariah of Vernal Tombs man when I first met uh, Tanner of Obsequii, uh, I knew my life was changing. Uh, so this is the gold edition of the Rider of Vernal Tombs. It's beautiful. Um, this is medieval black metal. It, it can't be any more correctly done than this. Uh, the style is reminiscent of uh, mid to early 90s black metal bands like Riding Christ, Verathrin, Ophthalamia. Um, kind of sometimes reminds me of Forgotten Tomb in some ways, but it's got an identity all its own. Incredible record. I, I just, I can't even like gather my senses enough to tell you how good this is, but if you haven't heard it, you've heard nothing like this. You just can't go wrong with this fucking band. Incredible, incredible release. I can't wait to hear what's going on next. I've actually heard some uh, demos of what he's doing, and I can tell that there's a progression in style. There was a there was a great progression in style from the first record to this one. This is the second full length, uh, and that was exciting to see the progression. But now I'm starting to hear where they're going from this in maturity, and it's perfect. It's it's just gonna work out so well. I can't fucking wait for the next album to come out and get it on every format possible. I've seen them live twice already, and I'm gonna see them live for a third time in uh, September. So that was number two. This brings us to number one. Can you guess what it is? I didn't see this on the top of a lot of lists last year, uh, and I know this is kind of a odd man out, sort of oddball band. This is Dotheim's Guard, uh, Umbro Omega. Amazing, amazing return to form for these guys. This has always been one of my favorite bands. Um, even though I talk about how much I love the melodic stuff, I love lots of different kinds of styles of music and records and bands that you guys all love, I really, I feel like I'm the odd man out in that I love the weird, the strange, the contorted and obtuse, the atonal, dissonant, crazy bands like Dotheim's Guard. And I was a fan of these guys for so many years. 666 International was just an amazing cerebral experience for so many years. I didn't really like their last record all that much and I had kind of said bye bye to that band. But this is such an exciting return to form for them. And I can't wait to hear what they do next. Um, from, what I, from what I hear, they were able to, the members moved closer to one another so they're gonna be able to write more and rehearse more often and release more records. Um, this is just a black final edition on Peaceville. I'd still like to get the CD version of this so that I can have it in my car to listen to. Uh, but this album is perfect in every way. I'm actually working on a full review of this for No Clean Singing. I've been working on it for months. It's, I just I have to get it just right to uh, to properly explain how much this record does for me. Uh, it's just amazing. 
So check this out if you're in for something, if you're interested in something kind of weird. Um, it totally makes sense that uh, they would release something that good. Um, so that's number one. That was my favorite record of last year. Uh, usually what I ask of a number one record is to send shivers down my spine at least once. Or to make me go, oh, what am I hearing? Just, just something that makes my jaw drop. And that album did it for me so many times. I couldn't stop listening to it when I first heard it. Uh, so I could talk about Donut's Yard all day. Uh, hopefully I'll finish up the review here soon and you can check that out. So I've talked a few thing, few times about how I write reviews in this video. If you want to check that out, check out some of my writing. I've got both a blog that's rarely updated, but there's a lot of stuff from there throughout the years. Um, some reviews that I feel are fairly adequate and worth reading sometime. Uh, and then I also write for No Clean Singing, which is an amazing metal blog that you can follow on Facebook just to get the updates and stuff. Um, yeah, so I'll put links to all this stuff, all the stuff I'm talking about, down below. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos. Uh, and then share it with somebody to become a super subscriber. How about that? Um, so check us out. Again, we'll be doing more uh, CD videos. And I'm thinking about doing a giveaway. If I can maybe meet like a milestone, like if I can get 200 subscribers or something. I don't know. So... Uh, Catch you next time. Bye.